When you think of having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a stranger, or maybe even someone you know, what feelings come to mind? I can bet it's something like anxiety mixed with the inevitable embarrassment from having nothing to say. Because you're uninteresting, right? What could you possibly have going on in your life that is interesting enough to make a meaningful conversation out of? And on top of that, every time you do try to talk to somebody, it doesn't seem like they want to talk to you either. You might have finally been able to get over the crippling feeling that comes when you're about to approach someone just enough times to have a handful of random conversations, but every time it's happened, it usually goes goes like this. Hey, how's it going? I'm good, how about you? And then the conversation ends there. As a result, you have trouble meeting new people and making new friends because you can never find the right words to get past the small talk stage into the stage where you form a deep connection with somebody. This is part two of my two-part series on building strong, high-quality relationships. If you haven't seen part one yet, I highly suggest that you check that out first because that explains how to set yourself up in the right frame of mind to actually be open to socializing with people. And today, I'm gonna try to take you through each sequence of having a conversation and trying to get to know them better. So firstly, there's the approach. Many people can't even get past this part because they're too afraid of rejection or things going south. Well, let me tell you something that you might not know about rejection. It's usually a learned response that takes a while to build up in you. When you've fucked up talking to people in the past or have just been flat out rejected, and this has happened multiple times, you start to expect the worst and get anxiety before you even start approaching or talking to people. And you start to feel like you aren't good enough to make real friends. If you're still struggling with this part, what I suggest you do is taking a deep dive into yourself through introspection. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Being socially inept will be your fate until you dig up your past problems with socializing, come to terms with those problems, find solutions to them, and start on a fresh slate. You need to ask yourself, and I suggest doing this through journaling, why do I feel like this person will not like me or care about what I have to say? Does my social anxiety come from a bad experience I had as a child or just recently? And when you really find the root of the problem through introspection and you accept the fact that yes, you've messed up in the past, then you can let go and then you can start approaching people again. This is kind of what was happening to me when I went out in public to interview people about modern relationships. All you guys saw were the successful attempts at getting people to talk. But there were also plenty of unsuccessful attempts and rejections. And while I could have thought about those rejections and all the times that I've been rejected in the past, I didn't give those rejections any sort of attention. When I approach a social situation, I don't allow any of my past negative self to come into my mind because I've done a lot of that inner work and relinquished my past self's control over me using techniques that I've talked about in my past videos about letting go and not being sensitive, stuff like that. And once you do this, you should be able to approach people again. All right, so you've finally gotten past the stage of being able to approach someone and you've done it consistently even after being rejected. Now, what the hell do you say? If you really want to hook somebody into a conversation, all you need to do is tell them that you have the first debit card that lets you build your credit, which is the sponsor of today's video, Extra. Extra is the first debit card that allows you to build your credit and earn reward points just like a credit card. Yes, you heard that right. This is a debit card that lets you build your credit. This is incredible for anybody on my channel who is unable to apply for a credit card or gets denied when they do. About a year ago, when I wasn't making as much money, I actually went to my bank to go apply for a credit card and I got denied and they instead gave me a secure credit card, which isn't that good for building your credit. Building your credit as early as you can in your life is one of the most important financial decisions that you can make. It affects basically everything financially. It affects your ability to get employed, your insurance rates, your mortgage rates, and a lot more. So the way it works is that users connect extra to their existing bank account and extra spots them for their everyday purchases. Users auto pay extra the next business day and at the end of the month, all payments are tallied up and reported to credit bureaus. And you also earn redeemable reward points for every purchase that you make. There are no credit checks and there are no interest 
interest fees. So you can sign up for Extra using the link in my description and you can start building your credit with a debit card. Yes, a debit card. Now, as for what to say, you kind of got to just accept the fact that you're probably going to have some awkward small talk at first. You know, you don't want to come on too heavy right away and have the first thing you ask somebody be, Hey, hey. What's up? So tell me your worst childhood trauma and your opinions on whether existence is a simulation or not. Um, That'll turn people off from you pretty quickly if you come on that strong. Well, most people. I mean, if someone did that to me, I wouldn't mind. Like anything in life, getting into small talk and then transitioning into more meaningful conversations is gonna take a lot of practice. But the easiest way to start getting better at small talk with random people is embracing the awkwardness. Yes, small talk is awkward and it feels weird as fuck for both people in the conversation, not just you. And you cannot take this conversation too seriously. You see, the reason you can't get over the awkward stage is because you're you're too afraid to feel the awkward. When conversations start and are awkward, you do everything in your power to try and avoid it. And paradoxically, this is the one thing that's keeping you from getting out of the awkwardness. I'll give you a good example as to how I applied this. So about five years ago, this girl that I know invited me to her very formal, very fancy Christmas party. She's incredibly rich and it was going to be a bunch of basically teenage kids like wearing suit and ties, all dressed up having a nice party together. And when I actually first became friends with her was when my first girlfriend and I started dating because they went to school together. Now by this time, my girlfriend and I had been broken up for about a year and we hadn't seen each other since the breakup or actually a few months before the breakup because she dumped me over the phone. Anyways, the girl hosting the party told me that my ex was gonna be there and not only that, she was also bringing her new boyfriend. I hadn't talked to her in over a year and on top of that, I had to talk to her new boyfriend too? That would be quite the situation. But instead of backing out of the party and saying no, I said, you know what? This is a great opportunity for me to get into an awkward situation. So I get to the party, I see them standing there together talking to each other, and I'm feeling this fear creep up on me, but I just decide to go straight into my fear. I approached them and I said a few things to my ex, and somehow one thing led to another and I was talking to her new boyfriend alone in the corner of the party. Yes, it was certainly very awkward. I remember I was asking him just like ridiculously stupid questions about like how he likes formal parties and dressing up, but it was fun. The weirdness that was taking place, which was me talking to my ex's boyfriend while she watched, was kind of exhilarating because I was embracing those feelings that I used to run away from in the past. And this is how I suggest you approach all of your small talk conversations if you want to stop fearing the awkwardness. You have to voluntarily step into it, and as a result, it'll be less awkward, as backwards as that sounds. Now, regardless of whether you accomplish that or not, Something does have to come out of your mouth. To start a conversation, if you're in an after-school club or an event, you can talk about what's going on and expand on that. I recently had someone in my Discord talk about how they were about to go to a wedding for one of their high school friends and his high school crush was going to be there and he was very nervous to reconnect. So the advice I gave him for that was to add his own input on the situation and ask a question. For example, he could say something like, Hey, it's hella weird that we're at that age where some of our friends are getting married and some of us are still figuring shit out. What have you been up to since we last saw each other? So your input, along with an open-ended question, that is, a question that requires more than a yes or no answer, is an optimal way to keep good conversation going. But really, you want to be more focused on the latter, because you don't have to say much. In fact, I advise against saying too much. In my video, Overcoming Social Anxiety, I talked about the importance of becoming an active listener. This means that instead of thinking about what you can say next during a conversation when the other person is talking, you actively listen to them and then they say something that you can build off of and you ask questions about that thing and add your own input. The more you can get them to talk about themselves and open up, the greater the chances are of you finding someone that you share similar interests in because 
because you have to get past that small talk stage to even know if you guys have similar interests and likes and a good connection. But you can get better at getting them to open up and talk more if you become their mirror. What I mean by this is if you can become somebody who is very easy to talk to through what you say and how you act, they will mimic that behavior. And if you want someone to open up to you, you yourself must be physically open. This means maintaining eye contact about 80 to 90% during the conversation, having an open posture and standing upright, not fidgeting around, and smiling and nodding your head to remind them that you're listening. That shows them that you're literally and figuratively open to being vulnerable with them, and they will be more comfortable with you. And then you can also do this through your words. For example, let's go back to that wedding that the guy in my Discord is going to. Maybe after a little while of talking, his old crush says, Yeah, I don't know, I have this job I'm in right now, and kind of just making life a drag. He himself could say, I totally understand. There's such a huge societal pressure to have your life figured out by now, and it's forced me to overthink my current situation and if I'm doing enough in my life. What is it you really want to do with your life? So here's what happened here. This guy initiated the vulnerability and wasn't afraid to talk about something deeper, which was him overthinking and not being sure if he's doing the right thing in his life. Then he asked her a follow-up question on that to have her be more open and willing to talk about the same thing. This is something that you naturally get a better feel for and you won't even have to think about it after a certain while the more that you do this in conversations. But the entire conversation doesn't have to be deep and meaningful. In fact, I recommend that you add some humor in there because <laughs> laughter together is also one of the strongest connections that you can have. So adding humor and kind of joking about the deep vulnerable things, if it is appropriate, will lighten up the situation and get them to like you more too. Recently I had a video come up on my YouTube recommended by Max Reisinger. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It was about him talking to strangers and making friends with strangers in Paris. And the whole video really touched me the way he edited it, the music, it just made making friends with complete strangers look like such a sexy thing basically, like it was basically out of a movie. And I absolutely love that and it really motivated me, but it was a reminder to me and it's a reminder to you guys that most of the conversations that you have, most of the social interactions you're going to have in everyday life are not gonna be like that. It's gonna be messy. Most people you talk to, you're not gonna have a good connection with. Maybe they really just won't have anything to say after applying all of this. And yeah, you'll get rejected a lot probably. But that is really what makes finding these rare opportunities, that's what makes them rare to become friends with random people so much more valuable. Thank you to all the patrons on this channel on Patreon. If you don't know what this is, it's a platform separate from YouTube where I am putting out exclusive videos and podcasts. You can also talk to me one-on-one -on -one there. Link in the description, patreon.com slash Cole Hastings. That's it for this video. I hope it helped you. I hope you're going to get out and go talk to more people off of this series. Thank you so much for tuning into this series. I love you guys so much. Let's keep it up. Let's just keep freaking moving forward.